This time we're going to try recording as well. A few things today. Oh, I got to mute Jern. Sorry, Jern, you're too loud. So there were a couple of plans today. Let me track those down real quick. Well, first and foremost, where are we? There we go. Huzzah! How's it going? Yeah, my screen looks a little screwy at the moment. And uh, spent the whole weekend setting up a new laptop. Well, new to me. I haven't had a new machine in forever. <laughs> Been getting by on junkyard scavenging, but not today. Today we actually have a decent machine. I might even have to update my stats down there. And you're just seeing the uh, chat bot up and running. Quick check. Well, that's fun. Oh, but you're working at least. We can at least catch a Pokemon. One thing that's kind of crazy, you can kind of see it in the bottom. I have, normally I cut this off. Still working on the screen sizing here. But if I go full screen... Oh, that's not going to show you. Actually, this is already full screen. If you look, you can't see... the bottom so like see there we go <laughs> no wonder the uh bot didn't register it wasn't running and i couldn't tell that because this little bar is covering up the bottom of the screen so i might be doing a little bit of troubleshooting first just to figure out what the heck is going on there uh, let's try again sweet all right so the body was working. I didn't break something over the weekend. I didn't put any additional effort into it, but you never know, right? <laughs> oh, let me start off by saying hi to everyone. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you want to hang out, lurk here. If you're watching on a VOD, the follow really helps. Otherwise, hey, hi. Thanks for uh, spending some of your time with me. Sweet, I caught the Swirlix. <laughs> uh, you know what I haven't done? Uh, I still want to... I do go to... My channel. And I think I'm muted. Yeah, good. Let's uh, pop this out just so I have it. And there I am. Sweet. I got an Unown over the weekend. That was fun. Exciting times. Actually, I'm curious. Uh, my loyalty here is 11. I'm only 11. <laughs> loyal to myself. <laughs> Love it. Increase stone drop. 5% in the stream. Cool. We can put this away, right? We'll play with that another time. All right, so first things first. Let's see if I can't find why this bar is hanging out here. I think I ran across something in some searching last night. Oh, I was looking for squirrels. It's not weird. You're weird. Uh... Nope. There we go. Bring you back. Put you away. All right. Let's see how it goes. 
I am looking for what is it? No, uh, gnome, dock, gnome dock covering windows. Right click on the dock. No, that's another thing. I want you can't see it, but I want the clock on both. On my old stream, my clock was up here, and having it on the wrong window bothers me. And I'm sure that there's a way to do it. Uh, maybe not dock. Gnome. Uh, dash to dock. Yeah, see? I've been looking. Oh, that's right. There was a different one. There was a different version. That's what I saw last night. It was like dash for something. Task bar, very light, some settings. Was what I was looking for. Yeah, it always brings up Docker. Like, uh, no. Kind of the same stuff. What's going on? A few tweaks for GNOME Doc. I don't understand why people like a hiding dock. Well, no, I do understand. I get it. People want that, you know, you pay for the whole road. I'm going to use the whole road. But do you really? Let's see what this shows. Proceed anyway. Oh. So use much info. So I've got the apps menu turned off, background logo, background logo. And I've got dash to dock. Let's try, what do you look like? What happens if I go full screen? Hey, wait a minute. Oh, right. I don't like that one because it puts this it gets rid of the clock. Do I live with it? Maybe there's some settings in here. Maybe I can just leave the panel back. On all, I don't want it to hide. Date menu is visible. Desktop button and applications button. Hmm. You know what? I might just go with this and see if I can live with it. It's a little bit like Windows. Not a fan of that. But, uh, oh, wait, what about? Why do they, sometimes it's up here, sometimes it's down here, and I just completely miss it. All right. Running indicator position. Oh, this gets rid of my vitals, though. My vitals are just gone. Okay. So these are for the individual icons.
show favorite, show favorite, show running, notification counter badge. Oh, that would be probably down here if I have notifications, but I want it up here. Isolate monitors. Okay. Nope, don't care about the actions. Keep original gnome shell dash. Top panel. Okay. I mean, it puts it on the wrong window, but that's okay. So then I can go back over here and I can just say... Um... Everything that's stacked to the right, just we're going to make you invisible. What's the desktop? Oh, okay. If I have additional desktops, it's kind of stashed over here anyway. All right. I think I can live with that. What are you? Oh, uh, okay. Nope, don't care about, well, kind of, I could use that. That's kind of what I use, what I use that for. I guess, actually, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that, there's no reason to have this. Okay, we're gonna go with that. We're going to call this good. Cool. Thanks for hanging out with me through that. On to the next one. Is there... I seem to remember that there was an option to add... Add a stream marker. There we go. Boom. We're going to say, switching to news. Something went wrong. Cool. Try again. All right. It just doesn't like adding a stream marker. It was worth a shot. All right. So let's put the extensions away for a little bit. Next up is news. There's a couple of things I ran across. Let me, did I ever update my news? Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Deed, 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 deed. And then, boom. Oh, it's funny, I put the background in this one. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, today, I mean, obviously, Everybody's heard about everybody's social security number getting stolen. Um, what are you going to do about that, right? Like, there's plenty of options on where you can go and what you need to do to, to lock down your credit. That's the most important thing. Uh, one thing I recommend. Have I been pwned? It's really easy site just to see if you're in there. Put in your email address. Um, there's, I believe there's other options for things that you can search. Uh, this will just tell you if you show up in any one of the breaches that have happened recently. Worth checking out if, uh, if you have any concerns, obviously. Uh, another cool thing is that if you sign up, uh, they're going to send you notifications if you do show up super helpful um yeah i i use this service I, i'd recommend it there I'm, i think there's a couple other services like it um i believe google with their password manager will let you know when a password shows up as well um, but it's looking at passwords which is mm, that's kind of nice uh because you've saved that data right whereas this is a bit more generic um, 
Next up is this one that came out a couple days ago. This is actually my first time reading it. I read about it, but I haven't actually read this, the, the information on the CVE. Um, so in the way that it validates annotations on ingress objects, annotations in Kubernetes are used to attach by arbitrary non-identifying metadata to objects. In the case of ingress Nginx, Nginx, annotations are used to configure various behaviors of the ingress controller. Who is vulnerable? All versions of ingress Nginx controller version 1.12 and lower. Uh, Multi-tenant clusters where it's de de default. <laughs> uh, no, I would never. Uh, environments where strict RBAC uh, not who can create or modify ingress objects. Well, uh, it's kind of strict, only me, I guess. But let's take a look at it, right? Oh, good. I already have OpenLens running. And hey, what do you know? I want to add that to the hotbar. Let's go to our pods and we want to look at Nginx Ingress. Let's see what version we're running. 1.25.4. Lucky for us, not a big deal. So here's how a malicious ingress object would work. Ingress object with a specially crafted annotation that includes a carriage return. Arachnid. Pokey catch. I didn't even check to see how many balls I got. Hang on. Oh yeah, this would definitely happen on the news, right? <laughs> oh boy. I have nine Pokeballs. That's fun. All right. So, uh, boom, boom, boom. Server snippet. Oh, wow. Interesting. So it'll send a, t and then it will send an alert with a script. Oh, that's cool. I may just have to install a vulnerable version just for the purpose of checking this out. That's not a today. I haven't planned that or done anything like that. So with that, that's been uh, <laughs> today's security news. All the fear and loathing that you could possibly need for one day. Let's get back to the ranch. And throw a stream marker in. Even if it, something went wrong, whatever. We can give it a shot. Okay, so what are we going to do now? It's been a whole 20 minutes. Step one. Hydrate. Yeah, we're done. Thank you, everybody. No, uh, <laughs> let's start bot working. Why not? What was I doing on Steam? Oh, installing a sprite. Ooh, that's exciting. All right, so we are working on one of the bugs here. This one. We're working on the commands that stop working. Did manage to track down why. Uh, there's a session reconnect. And... Doom, doom, doom. Nice. Now I can actually see that. So 
so we need to go into our web socket here and actually a bit like auth we just need a maintain function um i had all i was gonna try and do it where it's like here's the new one here's the old one i don't think i want to do that i don't want to do it in the maintain because as of right now This is, I've only got start WebSocket, and that's, you know, that's all well and good, but if I switch that over to maintain, what it says is that I can run that continuously, whereas a start, it's, I only want that to happen once, right? So let's see. And maintain is basically just going to call start, but it's also going to try it rebuild one after a reconnect so let me see if i can draw this out real quick and pin definitely don't need you uh where were we we are looking for oh, i don't have anything to draw well what do you mean let's do it in a sprite why not <laughs> it's dumb but right Yoink. Yeah. All right. So let's let's talk this through. We've got the initial request. No, we want black. We've got the initial request. Um, that goes through, makes the subscription. I need to get better at drawing or writing with a mouse. Um, this is socket. I used to actually be fairly good at drawing with a mouse. Uh, I did a web comic for a while. Good luck finding that. Um, <laughs> suck sub. Uh, no, sock. <laughs> And then we have messages. Basically the, the socket gets created, the subscriptions go through and the messages come through. Uh, the messages we start out with welcome. And then we get the messages. Occasionally, we get a keep alive. Yeah, this looks like a three-year-old drew it. And occasionally, we get a reconnect. Oh, and and. So what we want is we want the reconnect, which is going to have a new ID and URL to go back up and create a new socket. And then it needs to close the old socket after a new welcome message clear mud all right why isn't minimize here i know you have to just double click it no that's maximize why isn't minimize here what happened to minimize why why would you do that? So this is my first time in a very long time using Fedora. <laughs> and I'm finding out things like, 
they don't have minimize for reasons. And I'm not alone. Install GNOME Tweaks. Everyone says install GNOME Tweaks, but when you install GNOME Tweaks, guess what? Well, let's do it. Uh, software. A search. GNOME Tweaks. When you install GNOME Tweaks, it pops up and says, you want to go to, oh, it's over here. <laughs> no, it doesn't, okay, so when you pop, when you install this with DNF, or maybe it's because I already installed it and uninstalled it, I don't know, but it initially popped up and said, you should be using extensions now. Double click, middle click, secondary click, title bar buttons, maximize, minimize, put them back. Like, this is one of the things that kind of bothers me. This is, all right, hang on. Let me try and add a marker just because this could be clipped in the future with Linux. I understand that it should be customizable. It absolutely should be something that you can make your own and, and use your, your own technological abilities to build something that you can love and nurture and, and grow like a plant. But sometimes, sometimes, I just want a settings menu. And to have a situation like what we have in most Linux distros, you have a settings window that has a settings window that has a settings window. And then there's something else that makes tweaks to the settings of the thing that you already has a settings. There's just some things that in my mind, the Ubuntu devs kind of get, they realize like, I don't want to have to figure out which settings program I need to have installed to make something happen. And in other cases, I don't want to have to realize, I don't want to have to go and edit a config file because there isn't a settings available anymore. Um, I ran into this yesterday with this machine. It's a laptop. Apparently the GNOME settings, the people that make the GNOME settings app decided that in power settings, the lid switch isn't their problem because it's a system D function. It handles power. System D checks whether or not there's power. So GNOME shouldn't be doing it. I understand that and that's fine. But to just delete it, like just remove it from your settings app. Okay, but why? Like, okay, there there is not currently an alternative, so you just got rid of it. The the alternative is to go and create a custom.conf file and put in there that you want this to happen when there the lid switch is pressed. Why? <laughs> Whereas on Ubuntu it's just there under power settings, what to do when the laptop lid shuts. Like they understand that that the end user, if the end user cares about the politics, they'll deal with the politics. But if the end user doesn't care, they more than don't care. They're more annoyed by how dumb it is. Okay, rant over. <laughs> that was all. That was like a five minute rant. Ha. Ah. Anyway. Yeah. Can, can we just, can we have, I don't care if there's 12 different settings apps, that's fine. <laughs> but can you make it so that they can do the same things? Because that's the, 
the great thing about standards, right? There's so many to choose from. Uh, no, for real. Rant off. All right, so now we, we have... We have minimize on some windows. That's probably because I need to reopen it because Chrome over here does have those. Yeah, there they go. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Okay. So what was I doing before I just sent myself off on that? Oh yeah, okay. So we're going to make a... Um, maintain socket. And... I don't think it's gonna need anything because I'm using everything in this. Now, I've already got old Twitch. I can get rid of those. Because they shouldn't be needed outside of. Although, does that just take care of it right there? I mean, it kind of does. No, no, it doesn't because it doesn't close the old one. Ooh, a Porygon. Squirrel. <laughs> no, not Squirtle. Squirrel. <laughs> Jern is showing off his duck and I was just thinking about that very, that very thing right there. You are my duck. I mean, well, the, the camera is kind of my duck right now. And any of you that end up on the other side of that cam camera, you're ducks. I now understand Tom Millman just a little bit more, I think. <laughs> All right, so we're... I'm not doing this. We're not doing this. So what we care about, stupid Porygon got away. What we care about is we're looking for, here's the, the handle socket. So we've got the session welcome, cool. Actually in the session welcome, I need to make a thing, right? I need to set the status as one. The moment that that, well, actually, no, that works. Because I, this is what I was doing. My plan was to have two be reconnecting and, and one be running. So... Here, when a welcome comes through, where'd you go? There we are. So the welcome says that we've connected. Um, What's going on? This registers the session ID. And then we also want this dot status equals one. So we are connected. At this point, we are connected. Um, boom, boom, boom. Here we've got the notification, we got the chat message. 
then we have our keep alive, which we really don't care about, but it's there just so that we can see it. Um, and now we have this because we need the reconnect URL. And I believe it also gives us the new ID. Or does it? Let's take a look. Uh, Twitch Appy. Working with the boats. That's something I definitely want to do soon, but that's not what I'm looking for. Just looking for the Twitch API, the reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what? Twitch API, oh, that's different. I don't think this is what we're looking for, though. Yeah, that's shards. No, we want... Generate, update, get... I need a button right here where I can just have... David reads. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, we want WebSocket. Ping pong reconnect handling failures. I do need to do this one, but that's that's more like if I'm putting it out there for the rest of the world since it's just me. I don't think I need to worry about that too much right now. Um, API limits authentication. Oh, this is interesting. I don't think I've run across that before, but. Not what I'm looking for. This is something that I'm going to have to stick in my back pocket, though. Event sub, that's what I'm after. WebSocket events. Keep alive, ping, notification, reconnect. All right. So it sends the session ID, the status, and the URL. So here I'm setting the Twitch, actually, I shouldn't set it here. This is where I should just have the payload dot session and just drop it into maintain, right? Or should I? What would be the best way of doing that? Because if I, if I drop it in, then I kind of have to use it. I have to have something there, I think. But realistically, the only time I need to use this is if I get a reconnect. So maybe instead of doing this, uh, but I don't want to, 
this notification area is already far too large for readability's sake. At least my readability. So maybe instead of, yeah, I can just leave it as maintain socket. It doesn't really matter what it's called. So I, then I just have payload come through. And then I say, if uh, payload dot, I think ID, David reads. Session.id. There we go. Maintain. Oh, yeah. If payload.session.id. So this is one thing. All right, so because this returns the WebSocket client over here, I need to close the WebSocket client over here. I haven't done a lot of work with WebSockets. Sue me. Honestly, I don't do... I'm not a developer. Not a very good developer, anyway. Alright, so... Let's see. This target off. Okay, that's great. Oh, I've already started doing the, whoops, okay. So case zero, that says the first connection, which is zero startup, okay. So that's fine. And it returns the WebSocket client. Now in case two, How, the problem is, how do I close that? WebSocket client dot on open. Because I know that I don't want to, I don't want to leave two open. I don't want to just keep opening them, right? I mean, technically the other server is going to close them, but... That's less than ideal. So I should be able to... I'm returning the WebSocket client. Okay. Is there... I wonder if there's somewhere... Like, this is already returned. That's going to be another one. I'm trying to wrap my head around the exact... Like, okay. This starts it. It returns... I need to be able to close that. So let's look at the WebSocket library. 
Doom, doom, doom. Actually, I can probably just do... Uh, Oh, no, it's right there. But that's on close. What can I do? WebSocket client dot close? No. Let's look at that. server. Yep, that's just a test. Must have made a soft object, protocol, installing, opt-in, API docs. Let's go there. So that's the server, class WebSocket, here we go. WebSocket.close. with that client. This also sets the status to one and probably shouldn't. this to instead of start web I'm just gonna I'm gonna make this main pane so let's get rid of this just has to become maintained. So we've got case zero, the, the startup case. Um, if case is one, then it just returns, no big deal. If case is two, which is what it should be if we get the reconnect. So we basically do the same thing ish, but what I'm going to do is
Actually, I might do that here too. Just because I'm curious what this looks like. And I'm gonna drag this over here just in case it has anything screwball in it. Yeah, it, it's got the key in it, so I'm glad I did that. All right, let me scroll back down past the key. Good. All right, so we're going to get rid of you. Now, in the case that we have this problem... What we're going to need is a, we're going to need to basically renew it, but let's see, so it handles, blah, blah, blah. I guess instead of having all this bounce around, I could just do it here. Get rid of this switch and just say on. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm massively overthinking this. I know, I'm shocked. Are you shocked? I'm shocked. Oh, and I missed a Pokemon. Womp womp. only have 11 loyalty points to myself you know what yeah let's let's do this get rid of this switch It's funny, it's really easy to add these. It's very hard to not. <laughs> it's very hard to take them back away, I mean. All right, so this is going to say... On message. So can I put the if message in here? So if I do just another one of these, so it's just checking them twice. This seems like overkill. say if uh, in this case it's data dot metadata dot message type uh, equals we're looking at session reconnect Go. 
<laughs> Echo. What's missing here? Oh. Cannot read properties of undefined. But it's pushing data. Oh, it's okay. So I need to do it this way. That seems weird, but okay. This specific specifically says if the message is a reconnect, then we do the thing. And that's going to be instead of Twitch address. In this case, let's go back down here. It feels like it would be easier to do it this way. And then if Metadata equals this. Oh. What? Jason Parse. Oh no, that was right. data to string. Oh, right. <sighs> cool. All right. So if it's that cool, otherwise well, we don't want to return because we want it to go on to the next one. Let's see, does it still work? Still works. All right, cool. All right, so if it is a reconnect, then we need to grab the additional data, which is in this case going to be payload.payload. Uh, all right, let me let me fix that up. So I'm going to have to do new web socket is equal to this uh no we're gonna do oh 
Am I crazy? I'm crazy. Ah, that fish tank ASMR. As I heard it called today. Thought that was hilarious. So in the case of a debug, reconnecting to, but it's not going to be reconnecting to, it's going to be reconnecting. Uh, it's actually reconnecting bot to Twitch. I should probably just have reconnect received. Reconnecting. A wild masquerade. Pokey catch. Actually. Hmm. So double clicking, uh, okay, so it brings it up this way. I don't know how I feel about that. Whatever, acceptable. Um, I am going to, uh, I don't think I need to. I was gonna purchase some Pokeballs because I have seven of them. Or I only have seven of them, I guess I should say. I know, you guys are super concerned with my Pokemon game. Um, well, someone should be. All right, meanwhile, back at the ranch. So if it's a session reconnect, then we need to, not this stop maintain, I need to say, let new WebSocket client equals not this uh, equals new ws dot no not dot uh, and it is going to be message dot payload dot dot reconnect URL no dot session dot reconnect URL. in the same way so when there's an when it is open I need it to close this one and then take it over I wonder if there's a better way of doing this there's got to be a better way of doing this right let's see um, reconnect when server restarts. This is kind of what we're looking at. Do 
on.error.close. So that's just the reconnect option. That's not really what I'm looking for. Either the close event is called That's not what I'm looking for. Now oh, here we go. Webs, it's four years old, but hey, what do you know? Broken connections. I guess I do want to do that. I could, could I do that? So this isn't, this says on close reconnect. On error, just remove and then terminate. <laughs> there is no advice here on how to do it. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a possibility. Just redo it every hour, right? That's not what I was after, but it gave me a little bit more to think about. I don't want... worried about it going down like I can do on the on close or if alive right I mean technically is it a is it even a reconnect am I looking for the right thing here Open on message, on close, on connecting, on open. I mean, I would have thought that Twitch would have something. Maybe there's something in the main. Oh no, it's just never mind. Which sends the old connection a close frame if you connect to the new socket, but never disconnect from the old. So I think they're saying that it will close the old one for me. Maybe I just start there and then I can be a good steward and clean up afterwards.
Oh yeah, as you saw. There's a Discord now. I mean, use it just to chat amongst yourself or send me things that you'd like to see in the bot. That could be fun. So what's that? This says uh, socket equals new reconnecting. It's kind of the other way around, which is kind of funny. URL, protocols, options, debug, reconnect. Okay, but now this will just reconnect on its own. That's not something I'm interested in. Let's, let's just do what I was thinking, where... If the message comes through that it's a reconnect. So if I've got a new WS. What does actually let's do that. WS this Twitch address dot. No, no, that's I have on this is the new URL. This, <laughs> uh, this looks like it's turtles all the way down, and I don't want to do turtles all the way down. I think I may have had it right-ish. I don't think it's a new client. I need to go back to here. All right, so new web socket class web socket so I have an event event upgrade so what I'm wondering actually is I think I need to just create a new one because I can't there's nothing in here to change ready state send terminate oh server clients don't have this
can I just change it on the fly? This is where I need to set up their command line to actually test this. <laughs> But in theory, that just means right here, I just say, uh, web socket client dot URL. message dot payload dot session right message dot payload dot session dot reconnect URL And I also need to make sure that the WebSocket session ID gets changed. I mean, if I'm thinking right, that's, that's it. question is, am I thinking right? And the only way I can really test that, that is if I try and connect this over to this. Here. So I need to install the, the Twitch WebSocket and then I need to connect to localhost instead of all of this madness. Um, so let's do Twitch CLI, which I don't have installed on this machine. To install, use Homebrew. How about not? As you may have noticed, I'm very against having a million different methods of installing software. Give me two. Oh, there we go. Releases Linux. usually in opt yeah so let's uh, make sure everything lines up all right Great. 
Why does that have chrome in there? And it also doesn't seem to have a bin. Oh no, there it is. It's executable. Okay. So we're going to copy Twitch to opt Twitch. Huh. Uh, user local bin, user local, let's do this. What? Oh, right. User bin open lens, okay. So... Installed manually. Deal with it. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Actually, you know what I should have done? Okay. I don't think that would have been helpful, but... At least I looked. All right. So now what we want is to get rid of you, get rid of you. We need to start server. change um, I should make that just a standard for dev but options dot twitch I'm gonna do... this and try to spell server right then here I can change this out to stupidness oh I have to do a development auth too <laughs> uh, okay because it's not creating a token. Man. 
Now it shouldn't actually require it, so... Let me go here. If I just comment you out for this test. Line 40 is my problem. All right. Oh, that's cool. I just had the, uh, I've talked about this before, the OBS Blade app. It's pretty cool. It seems like there was an update and it just allowed itself to reconnect rather than crashing. If that's in fact true, good job, developer. I can't validate it. I'm looking at other stuff, but <laughs> if you fixed the problem that I was having, good on you. only with the get user ID which that's in the send chat message it's in the register so why do I have the register oh well it's gonna happen when I register either way So my best bet is really going to be just to, oh, I spoke too soon. It crashed. My best bet is really going to be thanks Clyde. My best bet's going to be just to recreate this and try and do just this. Or I build in the dev. I don't like the idea of putting too much work into just the dev. Or just the, the test side of it. There's, there's too many times I've had it happen where you build out everything for test and then test is different than prod and what exactly are you testing at that point? But... Let's look at this. So to connect, I mean, the authenticate, I guess the authorization doesn't really matter, right? Cause I'm, I can honestly, I can add, yeah, okay. Um, okay, no, I think I can do this without having to deal with that. Go back here. I 
What did I comment out? Uh oh. <laughs> it was in here that I. What? Go away. Oh yeah, I got I commented out this. And I need to say uh if Dev. Then do that. And I just up here, just say, this will work for now. Later I can use an environment variable. Oh yeah, you're not running right now, you're crashed. <laughs> All right. So we've got a dev server, dev is true. All right, so we're skipping the authentication. Um, it creates a new WebSocket. It listens for an error on open. It says it's open. We don't really care about this portion, actually. So we'll just do the same thing. If dev. Sweet. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. Ooh, man, have I, oh yeah, I caught the first Pokemon of the day. That's it. <laughs> oh, joy. If I have anything in here. Nope, I do have an announcement. Okay, bye. All right, so I'm connected. Sweet. Connected, connections, no problem. All right, so now I need to bring another one up. And in this case, let's go back to the ranch. We need to forward a mock event. So we need to say Twitch event trigger. Transport web socket. Uh, this should probably be. What is it going to be? Channel dot reconnect. Invalid event. Oh, no, it's going to be a message. Uh, we already know it's a message, right? Is it going to be channel dot message? Invalid event. Testing reconnect. Twitch event. Oh, WebSocket reconnect. Here, disconnected client, zero connections. Sweet. I mean, not sweet, it didn't work, but. Oh, it crashed. Okay, that's good. Cannot set 
which only has a getter. Ah, okay, okay. So we do need to create a new one. That's fine. We know this now. So we just say new WebSocket equals Alright, and now if I do the same thing, alright, we got one connected. Reconnect, we crash. Why do we crash? New, alright. Because we need to let that. Oh, best viewers on what now? Do you warn? Goodbye. I'm writing bots. I'm, well, I'm poorly writing bots. I'm not listening to bots. Alright, so this is going to create the new one. Does that mean I can... Am I going to have to do... Yeah, that should do it, right? And then I can close the old one. Well, first, on open, then I say... Uh, WebSocket... WebSocket... Client... Dot... Close. didn't crash we have zero connected though no we never saw two get connected um oh you know what let's get rid of debug let's make that an info log make sure that that's even happening right Cannot execute reconnect testing while it is already in progress. All right, so it did recognize it, but it doesn't create the new one, or does it? Well, we'll just do a console. Oh, it doesn't help if it's not defined yet. <laughs> we put you here. What? All right, we got one connected. We are getting it, cool, but then it drops. Do I need to return it? Because it doesn't, it's not opening. Unless I need to do this. Yeah, that's not going to work because that's not a thing.
so I get the new web socket, but it doesn't actually connect. Where do I make the stupid thing connect? I think I make it connect here. Oh, you know what's funny? Notice how none of these are changing. I don't have Git installed on this. Can you believe that? <laughs> let's let's just do that real quick. Oh, whoops. Well, then why? Why is this silly? Okay. I mean, I didn't install Git. I guess it just is installed, which is good. I guess I can use the sockets to reconnect or tell it to reconnect. It seems kind of roundabout. definitely feel like I'm missing something here and I'd well not feel like I'm absolutely positive I'm missing something here because it seems it seems like this should not be this interesting of a problem <laughs> interesting that's that's one way to put it right try looking at it from that perspective so let's let's put this away actually quick comment actually I'm wondering I do control tab no that's not what I wanted message comes through where are we at uh, not send and a web so we get the session session reconnect coming through can I just do this And do this? Like, is it that easy? OK. 
Okay, so I didn't automatically disconnect. This will drop everybody. Can I do... undefined I thought is live was what I was looking for boarded ended path keep alive closed has body should keep alive sorry I moved it off because well actually this doesn't matter there's no key this is all dev instant stuff. Larvesta. Poke Kitchen. Um, I thought I saw it is live. in Twitch. It was in the other web socket here. Nope. I guess I'm just crazy. That must have been on one of these other ones. I think that was in here somewhere. Right. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it reconnected itself. No, no, it did not. Um... So log. I, I can worry about cleaning up later, right? So it didn't catch it. Why? Why? Why aren't you seeing the messages when I do it this way? Let's switch you over to info. All right, we got the welcome message. Cool. ping it recognizes that we got a message oh well that would be an issue wouldn't it all right let's go down here at what point 
session.welcome doesn't matter except for the register portion. So we'll say happens oh, okay so far it's just there and we created a new one That seems like enough to me. close the connection but it doesn't really need to we back online oh no because I'm still in dev uh, dev equals false Okay, and we're back. So I just need to throw a quick if up here to say uh, if process dot and b equals dev dev equals true else dev equals false. That at least gives me some testing things. Uh, and I should actually have this. I think I can do that, right? Deal with it later. We're going to kill this because it's done. Done. At least now we have a way to do some WebSocket testing as well. Right? Right? I mean, sometimes setting up a test environment is worth the additional 56 minutes. Ah, I keep forgetting to put an announcement in Discord that I'm streaming. I mean, I should do it here on just general announcements, right? I like it. <laughs> I've been considering, because there is a promotion area here, I may end up putting something in there when I'm streaming. I don't know. I see other people doing it. It's the self-conscious nature. Um, I'm a very self-conscious person just in general. I grew up with the squeaky wheel gets the kick 
mentality and I hang on to that and you know it's one of those if I'm good enough I'll be found but that's not how it works that's not how it is in the real world and for anybody who's going through that same thing right now just realize a you're not alone oh, there's a lot of you out there and b do it what's the worst that could happen me i just have to make a habit out of it i have to start the habit of course and two-thirds of the way through my stream day is not the right time to do it but maybe tomorrow i just need to post it right here that says, do these things in this order. All right. Well, I think for the most part, we got our reconnect taken care of. Um, I'm going to plan on leaving it running tonight. And let's see, session reconnect. Did I get the message to pop up that said it was reconnecting? Redirecting to, yeah. Or reconnecting to. I wonder if that's how it works on my, the main one, where it reconnects and it has the ID. I should probably get rid of this, make this a logger.info reconnecting to uh, and instead just say reconnection received reconnecting to twitch and then do a logger.debug yeah that makes sense Oh, well, actually, no, because I've already set it, so it should be this dot Twitch adder. Let's get rid of this stupid thing. Let's do a quick console.log, get rid of. Nope, you are going to be. Oh, actually, no, that was. Kind of right. I need to figure out how to make the logger expand everything. Because console log expands it by default, but logger doesn't. There's probably a configuration setting in there. Let me. console log doesn't matter we can actually get rid of all of this though um, this is gonna be debug close out that ticket.
And Pokey Catching. We back. All right. So what's next on the get on the docket? Oh yeah, let's close that ticket out, huh? Right here. Uh, well, it's kind of a. It's not closed. It's more of a watch at this point. But uh, probably resolved. <laughs> Fetch. What? Uh, what? Name not resolved. What are you talking about? Boom, boom, boom. Settings. Let's just do that, make sure. How is that true? Failed to resolve. How are we failing to resolve? That's coming back. This is giving me data like it's supposed to be. Let's go to All right, the deployment's fine. The pod is running. You're running on dev mini 1. Check out the ingress. What about that? Let's go to 10.2.100.104. Nginx is running. What's going on here? Why would you suddenly stop working? Uh, unless... Does Google have something... Use secure DNS. Maybe that's the problem. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I was pretty sure that I have DNSSEC installed. here actually what about the services
10 dot, oh no, that's only gonna go to, oh no, 2.100. Ah, about 104. Okay, so it's saying that it can't find the host name here. Which is 10.2.100.104. 10.2.100.104. Do I have to do something stupid where it's like this? Yes, that's exactly what needs to happen. Okay. So it can get to it. And I know why that's happening. I need to set that up. One more thing I forgot to do. Uh, although, actually, no, that should have been... That's by IP, right? Hmm. What is going on there? on the list, I swear, guys. I mean, I can't imagine that it suddenly broke. What? Well... Okay, not loaded. Is obsolete, okay. <laughs> DNSSEC enable is obsolete. But I also have a bad name. Wait, I just did that. Edit. Oh, great. Well, luckily I'm going to be redoing all of that, huh? Uh, also not what I wanted. start here and just look at addresses. So it says I have a bad name next to this one, which everything has a period. Name.com option. Okay, but that's data bind ten dot two dot one hundred so that should be editing the con not that config file I need to edit the zone file.
It says near star dot. But that's not helpful. And it was star dot one dot dev. So it's supposed to be in here. Let me pull this over here. Try to flash in my keys. Says there's an invalid name next to start out one. But I don't seem to be able to edit just this one. There's the records file, but that's my, oh, no, wait, that was the right place. All right, put this back over here real quick. is at 416. From DHCP. Let's go back over here. NSR data from text. It's in the reverse lookup. I 
I mean, it is in the reverse lookup, so maybe I can just get rid of that. So no error on the host side. But why does it say... I'm looking here. I need to be in here. And it says there's a problem near here. first my thinking is just delete it and it's going to create a new one right so text editor we're going to pasta we're going to delete Before we go crazy, make sure that they're here. All right. Oh, I guess I could have just done and replace existing. No errors. Okay. same thing well no that got rid of all of them so if I go here now I have zero so I need to go here and in theory this if I Apply the zone. Then we go back over here. I mean, it's not going to find any errors, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I probably need to recreate the zone. but it at least gets the job done, right? So let's go here. Let's see if that creates a reverse. garbage if I had to go and do that for every single one of, yeah, that's, that's what has to happen. 
Uh, all right. And this will take a second. So I need to go here. save each one and jump back and forth and back and forth there's got to be an easier way there's got to be a single command that's going to do this oops let's do a quick check Oh, you know what? I bet I can delete the zone. And then if I go here, I think in the zone options. Notify, check, allow. No, that's not it. I think it's probably that one. Nope. Select all and just hit update. I don't want to delete them. Let's see. Does it recognize it yet? No. Do you recognize it yet? Oh, well, it recognizes that side of it. Why can't it find that IP address? Oh, I know why I can't find that IP. Um, this shouldn't be why I can't find that IP address, but I could imagine what's happening. Sorry, I'm really not used to the way that this is laid out or the way that this works yet. Getting there. That should be here. And there's only one address, which should be here. And that's the one that goes to the reverse, the other reverse zone. Oh, I also need to apply that configuration. Still hates my freedom. Um, do, do, do. If I check, where's the check? Am I blind? That check was like right here, right? Check records. Yeah, so that's the problem. Bad name. So it doesn't like doing this. And having it attached to this.
So let's see, if I'm here and I go to addresses, just because it's in this zone, if I just create In this case, it would have to be an alias, right? Never mind. Yep, continue. Which is star dot one dot connected me goes to star dot one dot dev. Is it going to take that? This is not available. Valid alias. Okay. So it doesn't like that either. It's always DNS. Always. Actually, though, let's... So this is the machine sitting right next to me. Okay, so that one works fine. It's definitely a problem on this laptop. <laughs> DNS tools installed on this. I don't have most of my troubleshooting tools installed on this yet. But I've got the default route. I've got that. do that for the sake of argument. Spinnerack. Oh, oh, slouching. I need a posture check for the bot. crash too many requests maximum subscriptions oh we're back to that why is that happening why is that happening again
Oh wait, I have connection open, connection open, connection open. What a day, huh? <laughs> uh, all right, so in the register, I'm going to change I want logger.info to string listeners. I'm curious to see how often that comes up. That's still there. Uh, can't find. Okay, so it's it's referring to its own internal. All right, it recognizes that one. So Fedora Resolve Control. What are you? Send control commands. I mean, I want it to refresh. Flush cache. I mean, that's such a Windows solution to a Linux problem. <laughs> Response from locally originated. Show server state. Oop, not this. Fastly. Uh, Discord. That's it. All right. Oh, no, I can't do W get. Um, so is the problem, I think the problem is that it is it's choking on that double all of a sudden, like you do. I don't know why it decided right now. Like, hey, you know what I'm doing? Uh, I'm choking on this. So let's return to the zone list. We'll go here. Go to the reverse addresses. The one that got added is this one. Uh, 
Uh, you know what? I think that's the problem. It's probably because there's two of them. And I don't know why it suddenly decided... Now if I go back over here, and I check the config, all good. Now if I go to this guy, and you, and you, and I save. And return. And we check. Same. So let's go back to here. And let's just get rid of this entirely. Yep. Can't say why that happened. Why it suddenly decided now is the time. But what are you going to do? Now I'm curious though. Does this have dig? It has dig. Wow, this has all my stuff already on it. Post. Alright. Well, I guess I'll leave it alone. I can't be mad at that. someone else in my background let's put Tom in the background Tom's streaming right now Tom Millman everyone what's Tom working on Brooklyn Bridge all right back at the ranch and we're back So one thing I'm kind of curious about, though, I think, well, this still hasn't erred, but we need to and I've made a lot, a lot of changes. Uh, you, <laughs> This is going to be one drastic change, and I'm not a big fan of that, but whatever. Um, the bug in this case, actually, this is something I need to be keeping track of. Number 40, I need to say which issue it is. Or instead of bug, I need to say... number 40 um uh, I have to say reconnect logic And we can set this. Oh, well, I have to push it. Hopefully this works. Okay, cool. Reload. Issue 40 logic. All right. Um, I need to figure out why it came up with the other issue, though. 
because it's not registering new ones. Prepare the subscribe channel chat and API return for 29. I, all right. Let's figure out how to make sure the logger time is realistic. Uh, what am I using for logger? I should know this off the top of my head. It's not that difficult. Pino. useful. Convert. Standard time. That's what I want. Epoch seconds, no, let's do ISO. So I think I should be able to just go in here. You know, that's standard. Wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. So this is me returning it. Options. The name of the logger. When added, sets a name field to every JSON log. Okay. Level, which I have here. Limit, edge limit, mix in. Not to. And why not? All right. Ooh, actually, there we go. Ah, uh, okay. So when it gets a command now, it just starts going pow, 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 pow. So it's when a command comes through. What did I do to the commands? Before I spend any more time on the logger. What's interesting is that it's, it should be saying that it's registering again, but it's not. will be actually no logger dot debug this is going to be um, I 
Welcome message received. And then for a notification, same deal. We're going to say notification received. Go to here. That's what I want. So npm run dev. Hey, I got a not to. So what happens when I send a dice now? whole lot save chat user exists so wait Why does it seem like it's working now? Why does it seem like it's working in dev? But it's crashing when I'm running it. <laughs> It's working in debug mode. Why? Blah blah chat message payload subscription ID But if I go this way Okay, so it takes a little while to kick in. Maybe? Maybe it only happens after someone else. All right, I'm going to have to start creating a, an actual like log of this stuff because that's weird. Now it's just working. I didn't change anything, but it's just working. Cool. Well, I mean, that puts me at five o'clock, basically. But I think what I'm going to do is start closing this out. Um, let's hop back over here. It says that there's still stuff to sync, so...
Oops. I need a uh, <laughs> dash am. Author identity is un. Why was I able to push? Okay. Oh, I wasn't. I was, well, I kind of was. It. So it should recognize at least that it was me that pushed, right? That's not good if, if anybody can just randomly push. Eh, need to get rid of the dev one. Yeah, okay, it recognized it was me. Because <laughs> I'm using my SSH. All right, so with that being said and done, um, if you were lurking and you're hanging out, hey, thanks for spending some time with me. Uh, if you swung on through and just didn't say anything, also cool. Uh, if you watched all of this on YouTube, again, thanks for uh, giving me the time. It's really cool and I hope everyone out there has some fun and hopefully if you've watched this far you've learned a little bit about either what not to do or you've seen something that made you go huh at least now i know how to take care of that so uh until tomorrow same bat time same bat channel have a good one